If you have a difficulty in believing in the existence of God, I have a suggestion for you. Please read I Do Not Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist by Frank Turek. The name is Chico and Clay and welcome to Light of the World, the 24th episode of Light of the World. And the topic for today is God uses anyone. God is looking for everyone to preach the gospel, to preach the good news of salvation to everyone. Doing the will of God is not a job that requires a particular qualification. It is indeed an OJT, on-the-job training. Remember when Jesus sent out the disciples? They were still students. They were still his disciples. They weren't graduates. But when he was about to send them out, Jesus told them exactly what to do, what to say, and where to eat, how to eat, and how to prepare themselves. So if you trust God, and if you have a calling, just go ahead with that calling, and he will equip you on the way. Because God is not on the lookout for the qualified. He is not looking for people with degrees. Although they all fit in the kingdom of God, he is not on the lookout for just the qualified. He's actually calling everyone who is willing to carry the cross. He qualifies and equips those who are willing to accept his call. Amen. Um, to prove this, you must have heard of preachers. I have heard of preachers uh, who humbled themselves by admitting that they weren't born again uh, when they first started their ministry. And I have heard of a few pastors who would sincerely share their testimony of being born again many years after they were ordained. On the other hand, there are a lot of uneducated people out in the field, out in the mission fields, ministries, churches, and even illiterates who have won souls to the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm pretty sure you have heard of people like that. God uses anyone willing to carry the cross. Qualified, unqualified, literates as well as illiterates, educated ones, and the uneducated ones alike. Tall, dark, and handsome, and even short and stout ones too. And let me assure you, God isn't worried about your sex. God wants everyone to share the good news of salvation to everyone. Look for women of God in the internet. Surf the internet and type women of God in the Bible and you will be amazed. You will be surprised at the, the numerous names you will find there. Let's start with the creation. You know, God wants women in his ministry. Women are not lower than men, all right? I'm a man and I admit to this because at the creation, when God created Adam, he took the dust from the ground, the mud, the clay, and formed that into his image, all right? But when he created Eve, he made Adam to sleep. He was sound asleep and God took out a rib from Adam and from that rib God created Eve just imagine who, what is more valuable dirt dust clay or your bone women were made from from the bone of a man from the rib of a man and so what is more valuable and you can find this in Genesis chapter 2 verses 21 and 22 it reads then the Lord made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man and you know what Adam says when God brought Eve to him he says whoa man and that is why women are called woman whoa man get it because she was so beautiful and do you know why God created woman in the first place because the man felt lonely he could not survive so God gave him a woman a perfect match for a man all right and number two that was number one number two whom did Jesus first appear to after his resurrection in Mark chapter 16 verse 9 we find this when Jesus rose early on the first day of the week he appeared first to Mary Magdalene 
out of whom he had driven seven demons. And this is not all. It follows by verse 10 which says, She went out and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. Those who had been with him refers to the twelve disciples. And who were mourning and weeping uh, could be referring to his relatives, his friends. Jesus had friends and relatives also. And so Jesus appeared to Mary and Mary did not keep her mouth shut. She went about telling the resurrection of Christ to the disciples and the relatives and friends of Jesus. All right, point number three. What happened on the way to Samaria? In John chapter 4 verse 1 to 42, it's going to be too long if I read the whole thing, but let me uh, bring out the important points um, here. Anyway, they were on their way to Galilee from Judea. They stopped on the way because it was hot. Um, it was around noon. Uh, in verse 7, John chapter 4 verse 7, it says, When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? The strange part here is the Jews and the Samaritans, they did not correlate. They didn't want to talk to each other. They had no, they didn't have a very good relationship. And so um, his disciples, when they came back, they were surprised that Jesus was talking to a Samaritan woman, not just a Samaritan, but a woman as well. And this woman was also surprised. She said, why are you talking to me? I'm a Samaritan, you're a Jew. Why are you talking to me? This shows that Jesus is so not racist. He doesn't care what people he talks to. You will see as we go on, uh, the type of person um, she was, the Samaritan woman. What type of uh, a person the Samaritan woman was? The fact is, you have had five husbands. This is what Jesus said to the Samaritan woman when she said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, the fact is, you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Jesus knew everything about the Samaritan woman. During those times, if you commit adultery, you were supposed to be stoned to death. But maybe not the Samaritans, but that was what the law of Moses said. If you commit adultery, you are supposed to be stoned to death. But Jesus didn't care, right? He chose the Samaritan woman, a person who had, who had had five husbands and is now living with someone else. He was talking to her. Jesus proved to the Samaritan woman that he was the Messiah whom everyone had been waiting for. After the Samaritan woman believed that he was the Christ himself, this is what happened in verse 28. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Messiah? In verse 30, they came out of town and made their way toward him. All right. So she did not keep her mouth shut. Jesus chose a Samaritan adulteress to proclaim who he was to her people. So God uses anyone who have had a bad past or a wonderful past. God is not looking for who we are as in a human being, but what we can be with him. We can't do anything on our own. But with God, we can do all things. Here is the end of the account Jesus had with the Samaritan woman. In verse 39, it reads, Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I did. Now, when the Samaritans came to, came to him, Jesus, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Jesus was asked to stay in Samaria because of the testimony of the Samaritan woman, a woman whom nobody saw fit, but she testified that Christ was here and that he knew everything about her. And therefore, with her testimony, many came to believe that the Messiah was here. And in verse 42, they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. This doesn't mean we don't trust you. 
but we believed you and now not only because you have told us about Jesus but let me read this they said to the woman we no longer believe just because of what you said now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world because the woman testified the people in Samaria began to trust God began to believe that Jesus was the savior of the world because of one woman's testimony Samaria was changed thank you for watching and see you again next week god bless you be safe